Hello, Doodle Crewmates, and welcome back. We are here with another artist interview. Today, I'm sitting down with guest Doodle Crew artist, Joey. Hi, Joey. Thanks for sitting down Hello. with me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, I'm happy. I'm happy to uh, to get to have you on Doodle Crew and hang out with you. Um, and this kind of leads into my first question of how did we meet? How did we know each other? Well, um, we actually met at a show, um, a convention. I don't convention. think it was a full-blown convention, but... <laughs> In our small town, it was a it was a convention, but um, funny story behind it because and this happens more and more with us. But <laughs> as we were talking at that show, we sort of uh, started to connect some dots and realized we were both uh, Art Institute of Pittsburgh alumni. So. Yep, and it was very weird because the area we're in is not in Pittsburgh; it's not even in Pennsylvania. <laughs> we are. A decent way removed from that and it was also we did not go at the same time no yeah, which is well, very like funny eight year difference between when we went or something yeah <laughs> yeah it was it was a little bit surreal and then after that i was like oh no but they're just you're just my convention buddy now and oh it turns out you're actually a local artist and holy shit okay cool <laughs> right <laughs> oh, no i i enjoy that and it was it was funny because I know for those first few conventions, even though they were very small, I still wasn't sure what I was doing. Like, oh, yeah, I for sure. <laughs> just recently started creating. And now I love it because we see each other at shows and we're like, hey, how's it going? This and that. Like, it's I don't want to say old hat, but we've definitely gotten more comfortable, more set in how we run our tables oh, at yeah. Comic-Con. Yeah, for sure. Like, so. No. I remember going to like some of those shows and it's just like the whole back of the truck is full of stuff. And now it's like, I've got like two bags that I bring in and everything's in it. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you've, you've streamlined yours so well, like e your hashtag goals for that, because I'm like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, I need that. I need less crap. Cause set up and tear down take forever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's good. And it's fun. Cause I know, I know for both of us, we've kind of gone through evolutions of, what we're selling at our table or what we're promoting. You know, you've worked on comics on and off. You've done a lot of sketch cards. You've done prints. Like there's been a lot of different things that have moved through your table, which is really cool. Yeah. I think that's important too. Like, cause you'll see like, especially if you repeat shows, like there's definitely a drop off if you're only doing like prints or t-shirts. So you definitely have to keep like, keep like a flow of different product coming through. Yeah. I'll try uh, game mats. I think when I get back to it. Yeah, that's so. exciting. No, I feel like your work would fit really well with that. So that's dope. Uh, so this, uh, I'm just going to pop it up because we, we did talk about it. But yes, uh, Joey is an AIP alum, although we are not alumni at the same time. But when it comes to making art and doing all of that, how long have you been making art? So I can give you the boring artist answer, which is I've <laughs> always done it, right? Like I remember <laughs> drawing as like a little, little kid. Um but professionally, probably about 15 years. I did some okay. caricatures in my late teens. So um, then I went to school in my early 20s, early to mid 20s. And then I would be running the convention scene a couple of years removed from that. So it's but, been a while. Yeah, it's been yeah. it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you always know, like, I think a lot of us kind of knew, like, you always wanted to do something with art or it was just a, I really love this and maybe I could actually do it? I think it was more like I wanted to do something creative. Like, I don't like fitting into the mold of like a regular like desk job. Um, so I was always looking for something creative to do, but I was never really set on it. Like, because when you're a kid, everybody's like, oh, yeah, you should go draw for Disney. It's like, oh, my God, I've heard that so many times. <laughs> now I want to do something else. <laughs> so um, I played around with, like, the idea of uh, DJing for a while. Like hosting, okay. hosting radio. Um, like I said, the late teens, I was doing caricatures. So I did, I did do some art like that professionally early on. Um, and then... Uh, I have, I've also on and off considered writing. Like I like to write, but I definitely haven't like pursued it. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll get into a phase where I'm writing. I'll be like, all right, I gotta do this. <laughs> I'll write a whole bunch of stuff and then I don't submit it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what? Doing art and then not following through with it? I can't relate at all. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's the same oh. for all creative professions, I think. 
It really, really is. And I know uh, talking about deadlines and stuff like that, like I know that's an important thing for me because so much stuff can just live in my head or live in my sketchbooks and never see any more attention because there wasn't a deadline on it. It was just this amorphous thing I had floating around and okay. Yeah. Uh, so as far as work goes at this point in your life, is art your primary job or career or do you do a combination? How do you, um, how do you define so that? So right now it's freelance. Like uh, I take commission work obviously. Um, and that's where a big uh, source of income comes from that and shows, but like living through pandemic is like cut that lifeline off. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, but no, like traveling the convention scene and doing commissions is a lot of where my uh, my art career uh, and the income from that comes from. Uh, but I still work a, a regular job. I work at GameStop. Now, do you find, is it easier for you to have a day job that kind of isn't art related so that you can just go show up, do that, and then come home and then turn on your art brain? Or do you find you still find ways to do art at that job? Oh, no, I do. Um, because I hung out with a lot of uh, game art students uh, while I was at AI. I also started in animation. So a lot of my conversations at work will wind up being geared towards the art aspects of the game. Yep. Um, or calling out like things that I think are design flaws and like cover <laughs> art. Or um, So yeah, it definitely, it definitely filters in, even though it's not like a specific art job. Yeah. No, I think I think when it's in your brain and it's a part of you, it it finds a way in. Yep. So when it comes to your specific art style and what you do and obviously, you know, making a living off of conventions and stuff like that, how did you find your way into your niche in your art? Um, so I got into anime before it really started to pick up in the States. Yep. Um and it was close to that like Disney style, but it was like different enough that I felt like I wasn't just conforming to what everybody was telling me to do. <laughs> so I really started like getting into anime and trying to draw that sort of a style. Uh, and as I've gone on, it's sort of gone back towards Disney. Like I've got those anime roots, but I've like gone back towards the <laughs> Disney style with it. Um, so I guess it's life. Life's a wheel, right? <laughs> yes. But I think it's it's the the parts of Disney that you really embody is you have these gorgeous, like smooth, clean, beautiful lines that also have a great movement to them. And that's something I think Disney does beautifully. And, yeah. and so like I can still see that. But also when I look at stuff, I know it's your style because I, right. <laughs> I I know it's you. And that's that's really cool. So I think you blend those two really, really well. And yeah. and it's fun. I you know, a lot of your art makes me laugh on purpose. Not like I'm just laughing right. at your art, but you you have a great comedy to it and and a playfulness. Which is very um, cool. Yeah. And that's something like when I first uh, got to AI, like a lot of the the intro like 100 level teachers we're talking about um is i did gesture really well so like movement gesture uh so i've always like just leaned into that <laughs> um yeah and then obviously i have like the caricature background i was talking about too which also sort of lends itself to that sort of liveliness and movement in your in your work in your line art and Absolutely. Being able and to exaggerate and squash exact, and squish. Yep. And... The exaggeration is a huge part of it. And I think I think it's what, I don't want to say set us apart because that sounds really pretentious, but it's, there's a reason a lot of us ended up in the graphic design field, the animation field, the game art field, because of that, that exaggeration, that cartoon, that mm -hmm. side of things, as opposed to some more fine art, because I think that's where our brains pushed towards and what we were drawn to. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> But oh, that's awesome. So uh, you've obviously done a lot of different stuff. What is what is a project that you've either worked on in the past or when you're working on now? What's something that you're really proud of that you've created? Um, actually, like a lot of stuff that has never been shared. Like <laughs> I've been really like this is this is the one, but like I've been too like what if it's not to actually put it out there. So a lot of my writing projects are like. Hey, hey, read this like to my <laughs> friend group, but I won't actually like post it anywhere. <laughs> and I've actually I've been talking to Hunter about that because he does. Uh, Hunter's the guy I host Slain Dragons in the Morning with. 
Um, he is getting into voice acting, and I've actually talked to him about doing like recording reads of the work uh, that yeah. I can put up on my YouTube channel um, as a way to get it out. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. But yeah, as far as like uh, art projects go, uh, we we had a successful Kickstarter. A friend of mine and I uh, did a comic. We got the first issue successfully kickstarted. It sort of fell off because the team like broke up with uh, life issues. But we had yeah. that. I also did a digital. Um, it was available on uh, Amazon and Kindle for a while, but a digital graphic novel uh, called Genome, like right out of AI. Um, I got set up with a guy through their work department and basically poured like a whole year and a half of my life every day working on this. Um, and it was, it was a slog too, because he was very sure what he wanted. And like, I couldn't do it as just pages. Like it was almost like a storyboard cause the guy wanted it to be a film. So I was doing individual panels that you would slide through. And uh, okay. So there was Interesting. no page layout work for it. <laughs> um, but like, it felt good to like get it done. Like at the end it felt good. Um, yeah. that was out there for a while. Uh, I don't know if you can still find it, but it was uh, genome was the name of it. That's cool. Um, but yeah. Well, and I think something that has always impressed me about you is, and, and we've joked about it before too, is you do work very quickly and it makes sense with the caricature background and interest in animation and stuff, but you also move through projects quickly. And that's not a negative thing. That's just a, like, you're able to be versatile and jump into new things and do that. And even when we would see each other at shows and then a couple months would go by and we'd see each other again, you had something new, you had something different. And I think that, like you said, with doing a lot of conventions, you need to have that new stuff to get repeat business. Yeah. And I think it works really, really well for you. And it's and it's exciting as a as a consumer, as someone who gets to view your art, like, oh, cool, Joey's got something new. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so. definitely something I've been talking to with Hunter, too, as we're sort of planning to get back into shows. Um, we want to do a book based on our first D&D campaign together. Yes. Um, that's sort of like an expanded universe uh, picking up where it left off. Um, and we're in the we're in the early stages of writing that, but we want to have that available for the next show that we're at. So that would be super cool. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's a, That's very exciting. So I hope to I hope to get to see that. Yeah. yeah. No pressure. Fun. No pressure. <laughs> uh, so in all the different ways that you've created art in the past and the way you're creating art now, what is what is a medium that you love to work in? Um, so basically growing up, I just did traditional, um, traditional pencil and, and ink art. Um, I have since moved to digital, which is nice. Um, I'm doing basically everything full digital now from the sketch to the finished art. Um, and it's just so convenient to be able to, to, you know, just control Z something away or yep. select something and shrink it or enlarge it, or it's just makes life so easy. Um, but like my secret passion that I don't do enough and I don't know why is, uh, drawing with ballpoint pens. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I really like just the way they feel and like, you can sort of it's very easy to control the pressure and the line sensitivity with it. So you can actually like sketch up on top of basically layer it up to a full yeah. drawing. Um, and you sort of lose the under structure as you go because you can get darker. Um, but yeah, ballpoint pen is, is really nice to work with. I don't know why I do, do it more often. <laughs> Uh, cause we get caught up in all the things that we're doing. And yeah. but I know it makes a lot of sense because in watching you, especially when you work on like sketch cards, which are a very small canvas and work, but that tight, like pen work, mm -hmm. it makes sense. It makes sense why that, that fits. And I see you knock those out like crazy. So yeah, that's awesome. So out of all that things you're comfortable with, what is a medium that scares you to work in or intimidates you? Um, so I've tried like traditional painting a few times now. Um, and I can't make it work like oils. Oils were better, but oils are very expensive. But working with like acrylics or water, I just can't make paint work. <laughs> no matter how many times I've tried it, like 
just does not. I can't do it. <laughs> there's there's some synaptic <laughs> connection, some synaptic bridge that I can't make when it comes to paint. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I think it's so funny, you know, when we talked about digital art is that there are ways you can you can use brushes and use things that kind of mimic, mimic that. It. Yeah. And so like I understand it. But the actual practical application when you move to the traditional medium is different. And yeah, yeah it's I think it's, it's it's the feel almost like you expect. All right, I'm going to swipe this brush across and it's going to and you swipe it and like all the paint stays where you left the brush. <laughs> and you just get this ragged drawn out line. Mm -hmm. You're like, Well, that's not what happened when Bob Ross did it. <laughs> I know Bob Ross setting such uh, unattainable expectations for me when it came to painting. I'm like, but Bob, you said it. You're just like, you just took a glob and went like this and it looked cool. I took a glob and I dripped paint on my pants and missed my canvas. Like, no, uh, but I, I love him. I love him. Yeah, forever. I was like watching a video on Instagram or something the other day where it's, they've got the canvas and there's just all these little color blobs on it. I'm like, okay. And they take a palette knife and they just start going at these blobs with the palette knife. And out of nowhere, like obviously it's time lapse, but out of nowhere they've got like this whole landscape painting. I'm like, how? How? How did you do that? How did <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. No, and it's it's so funny to me, especially as a teacher who has to explain my drawing process to kids. I can talk about how I visualize art in my head and how I break things down to simple shapes and do all of that. Like I can logically understand it, but you switch that over to paint and I'm just like, no, it's surgery. They're like, well, we just did this. We did this and it's practice. I'm like, no, no, I reject your statement. Uh, it's magic and you're a witch. Yep. That's uh, the only explanation. That's the only explanation. That must be it. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's too funny. So when you're working on your art and doing all of these different things, uh, how do you work yourself through an art slump if you find yourself in a slump? The big uh, I question. Slump, I slump a lot, actually. <laughs> um, the hardest thing is just like forcing yourself to do it, even though you know it's going to be bad. Um, it's like just sitting down and in front of whatever medium you're using, if you're on a wake on, sitting down, opening the canvas, and just starting to sketch like even like the best thing to do is like sit down and do it without having a project in mind like i don't want to do something in particular i just want to doodle and that's yeah. usually the best way to like break yourself out of it that i've found but yeah it's uh it can be bad because even then you're like what what is come on <laughs> what is you this garbage that you, you can't made? even you oh. can't even sketch an eye you've done this up <laughs> 10,000 times. <laughs> Literally having those moments of looking at your sketchbook or a piece of art on your computer. And you're just like, look right there. You, you did that. You've done it before. Can we just do that again? No. Okay. Yeah. It's no. And I, weird too. It's, Especially it coming weird. back. Like you haven't been able to draw in a couple days or something. You sit down. There's no reason for you to be rusty. Like, <laughs> And you it's sit down day. and you're doing it and you're like, <laughs> why? But why? <laughs> why? I, I knew how to do this two days ago. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> like, uh, I just assume like my cat knocked something off and I sustained a, you know, a brain injury in the interim. Cause clearly, clearly that's no reason. It, like, <laughs> it's weird too. Like it's not, it's not even like, sometimes it's not a thing of not doing it. Like I've done sketch a days. And I'll be going fine, and then I'll hit a day, and it's just like, why can't I do this? <laughs> yep, yep. No, so I, I really do think having that, that just I'm just gonna draw something stupid that doesn't yep. have to be a sticker, have to be a print, have to be a commission. It's just a thing. Literally, I can even trash it at the end of it, but just the fact that I made something to kind of work through. And I know, I know for me and the poor audience is going to keep hearing me say this, but it's what I like about doodle crew in that it gives me a reason to, even on days when I'm maybe not feeling my best art self to, to force myself to draw and to draw yeah. a specific thing. But also that is a thing that is, isn't related to anything else I'm working on. And that's been really nice. So I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very appreciative that you come and hang out with us on doodle crew and, 
and draw with us and be yeah, silly. Sure. So. Um, I don't know. Did, when you were at AI, did you ever have the instructor that did the uh, like the life drawing instructor that did the warm ups before you started sketching? Like he'd have you do like stretches and like shake your arms out and. Oh no, I don't think so. Or at least if I did, I don't remember now. Yeah. But I feel like that's such a good a good it thing was, that we. Yeah, need. like it seemed so stupid at the time, right? Like why I'm just gonna sit down and draw, but like, you, it relaxes you, I guess, and gets you like into a more zen headspace for it. Yeah. Well, and I mean, obviously it is no joke and no mystery when artists talk about, you know, our bad posture or our backs hurting oh, yeah. or our wrists hurting <laughs> and stuff like that. So I think that taking that just minuscule amount of time for self care yep. before you get into it makes a huge difference. And boy, do I notice it more as I've gotten older and have been doing art longer. And right? yep. But I feel like at least for me in college, because I was so young and so just nervous and scared about embarrassing myself, which is funny in animation because we literally had to act out what we were doing. Yeah. Um, but like the idea of being that just like, no, I just need to shake it out and be loose and do all of that. I was just like, but what if someone's looking? I'm like, we're literally about to sit and draw a naked person for 45 <laughs> minutes. Does it matter? But it, you know, it mattered in my head because I was so painfully embarrassed about everything I was doing. Uh, yeah, so it, it's funny and it's been nice to reconnect with people that either we went to school together or we went to the same school. So we have those same base experiences, but mm -hmm. also to kind of remind ourselves some of the really good advice that our professors did have that right. might have gotten <laughs> forgotten and or even just joke about the fact that like this silly thing that one teacher said to us once is still in there and still pops <laughs> right? up on every drawing that I do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's fun. But so if people want to see more of your work, find you, follow you, support you, where can people find you? Where can people see your stuff? Okay. So I just rebranded. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Sluty Mage. Uh, that's leet speak. So those are zeros and fours and threes. <laughs> Cause it's also my gamer tag. So come play video games with me. Oh uh -huh, yeah. Um, yes. You play all sorts of video games. Yep. Yep, Hunter and I have just like gotten real deep into League of Legends recently. Um, oh. That's bad. That's that's <laughs> like Warcraft levels of bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, that uh, you can also find me at Slain Dragons in the Morning. Uh, that's the talk show that is currently on hiatus, but I normally host with my buddy Hunter, who's a voice actor. Um, we talk pop pop culture and D and D and. It's usually a good time. Get your uh, Thursday started with a bang. Yeah, I can attest as having uh, gotten to be a guest on it. It was a blast. You do have you guys are on there. Yeah, it was super fun to <laughs> chat with you, and and it's fun. I something I think is really cool, and I love that you brought up talking about your writing is talking to both of you about D and D and world building and that part mm -hmm. of it. Uh, it was really, really cool. And obviously I've never played a game with you when it comes to D&D, &D, but you could see just the energy and the connection between the two of you and making that into a very good and positive, fun D&D &D experience. So sure, I think yeah. that's awesome. We should so. do uh, we should do an influencer D&D uh, &D game sometime with everybody oh. that's that plays that's an influencer that we know. Oh my gosh, that'd be so funny. Especially if we were playing like stereotypical influencers and stuff like, oh my gosh, I want to be the, the beauty makeup person. And, <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. We're going to talk about that more. So whenever this interview is coming out, uh, check back with us, see if we've, uh, we've worked any more on that, but thank you again, Joey. Thank you for coming and chatting with me. Thank you for being a part of doodle crew. I'm so happy to have you and yeah, get to do art with you again. Yeah. It's always fun. Um, looking forward to future projects. Yeah. Yeah. And someday, you know, tabling next to each other at convention again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> someday. Someday. Uh, well, thank you, uh, everyone. 20, 2022. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I th Fingers crossed. <laughs> 2022. Come find us. Come see us at a show <laughs> and check in on us. We probably need it. But thanks, everyone. Goodbye.